So here's a question from multivariable calculus. And it's designed to show you how the chain rule can be used to differentiate a function and show that a given partial differential equation has one form of a solution. Okay? So, here's our PDE. The subscripts mean partial derivative, so z sub x means dz dx, z sub y means dz dy. And we're told that z's differ uh, f's differentiable function of one variable t, and that t variable actually depends on two things. It depends on x and it depends on y. So we're asked to show that under those conditions, f satisfies this PD. Now, you don't know what f is. What is f? You don't know. The only thing you know is that it's differentiable, and therefore you can use the chain rule. Okay? Don't know what f is, don't care. All right? In the previous examples, we, we were given f, like logarithm functions and stuff like that. With this one, you don't know what f is. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to use the chain rule. And at least what I like to do with chain rule is draw a little diagram, right? So you start off with uh, z equals f, and then you look at the dependencies. F depends on one variable, t. So you draw a little link down to a t. And you look at t. t depends on two things, x and y. So you draw a little branch. OK? And suppose I wanted to calculate the partial derivative uh, of, say, z with respect to x. What I would do is I would start at the top and find all the ways or all the paths down to, to an x. When I go from letter to letter, I form a derivative. Okay, so let me show you that. Let's say I wanted to calculate dz dx. I'd start up here and I'd go, okay, df dt times dt dx. That's it. If I wanted to calculate this, df dt times dt dy. That's it. Okay? Now, again, some of you may be able to write down their derivatives just without thinking about it. That's great. But this method is scalable. You can you know, calculate all, all sorts of horrid um, chain rules with this. So let's do it. This is like a pick of the chain rule. OK. So to, to, to show this holds, we need to calculate the partial derivatives inside the, um, say, the left-hand side of the equation. All right, so dz dx, it's df dt times dt dx. So I've got an ordinary derivative there because f is a function of one variable. t is a function of two variables, so I want partials. Okay? Now, if you, if you muck them up, it's not a huge thing. If you want to be safe, though, you could always write these with partial derivatives, and you'd never be wrong. Okay? It's up to you. All right, so what is df dt? Well, you don't know. You don't know, so you just got to leave it as df dt. All right, or just, I'm just going to write it as f dash, just to save space. What is dt dx? Well, you could differentiate that using the, um, the uh, quotient rule, but there's even a, an easier way to do it. Right? If you split this up, you can write it like this. OK? All right, so that's a bit of a sneaky shortcut there. So if that's my t, what's dt dx going to be? Well, I'll differentiate this partially with respect to x. I'll get something like, well, that's going to be 0. That's going to be something like negative 1 on x squared. z sub y, df dt times dt dy. OK, you don't know what f is. Let's go up here, differentiate partially with respect to y. OK, well, that's going to be 0. That's going to be negative 1 on y squared. All right, so let's see if, what our um, PD is doing. Left-hand side of star. OK, x squared times z sub x, which is all of this. Oops. 
minus y squared times all of this. Oops, that should be a t there, sorry. F dash of t. All right, so now what's happening? The y squared is going to cancel out. The x squared is going to cancel out. What am I left with? <gasps> Zero. So is that the right-hand side of star? Yes, it is. So, in conclusion, so our PDE holds. So we're absolutely delighted about that. We couldn't be happier.